Hallelujah. Glory to God. This morning I want to talk about God is a rewarder. That's the title of my message. Let me tell you, never say God is a rewarder. If I may look around, turn to the people at your back and tell them, say God is a rewarder. Okay. Now we've been talking about rain this past few days and, and you know, while Pastor Shola was preaching yesterday, he mentioned, I mean, he was talking about there was no man to till the ground and then Dr. K mentioned that. And you know, all of these messages we are hearing, all of these things are supposed to instruct us, inspire us, and take us to new levels in our lives. God is a rewarder. God has a reward system. God rewards people for what they do. Hallelujah. In fact, the whole of our faith is based on this, that there is a heaven, hallelujah, and there is a hell. That when we please God, God blesses us. That's why the Bible says, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must know that what he is, and is what he is a... Oh, come on. Come on, talk to me. Okay, let, let's... Uh, Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you can... Uh, media, if you can get it, like really fast. Like you got, got it for... What was Pastor uh, Liam saying yesterday <laughs> for Pastor Shola? Okay, all right. Like, okay. So he is uh, what? A rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let me tell you, I never say God is a rewarder. Okay, let me give you a few more scriptures. Romans 2, 6 to 9. Who will render to each one according to his deeds? Eternal life to those who by patience, continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what, has, as what he has done, whether good or bad. Hallelujah. Peter was so concerned one day about, you know, leaving everything and following Jesus. He said, we've left everything and followed you, Jesus. Is there a reward for this? What do you have to say? And you know, look at what Jesus said to him in Mark, Mark chapter 10, verse 28 to 30. Then B Peter began to say to him, see, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake and the gospel. who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and the aid to come eternal life. Did anybody notice the persecution side? Amen. God is a rewarder. God rewards us. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 6, Jesus was talking about prayer. He said, when you pray, go into your closet. Uh, don't be like the hypocrites. For they think that because they have said much words, they will be heard. Now, that's not, you need to balance that, okay? I just finished a six-hour prayer meeting recently. You know, people take scriptures out of context. Like, you don't need to pray six hours. Say, Jesus, I love you is enough. But Jesus went to pray and he prayed for one hour. There was a time the Bible says Jesus went to pray and he prayed all night. He spent all night in prayer. And then the Bible says he went to pray. And then when it was morning, he came down and then he chose his disciples. I mean, he said, Ian, I and my father are one. But he still thought that he should pray. And he prayed that long, okay? So there's no scripture that tells you that one, one minute prayer is enough. Now, if you're starting with one minute, it's good, but don't stop there. 30 minutes is good. One hour is better. Six hours is really good. 24 hours is really, really, really good. He said, don't stand in public places and pray like they do. He said, go into your closet. And he said, your father who hears in secret will do what? Reward. Come and say reward. reward. Open rewards. There are rewards from God. God rewards us. He rewards us for prayers. He rewards our actions. He rewards the choices we make. Sometimes God rewards our motives, even though we don't get it right. Because he is a rewarder. Let me say one more time. Say God is a rewarder. Now let me quickly say this about, uh, uh, about understanding grace. Because if we don't understand grace, then we won't understand rewards. We think that our works qualify us. There's no way in scripture that works will ever qualify us. No how much we pray. No, how long or how fast we pray. Grace is what qualifies us. 
And once we have that understanding, then what we do afterwards will be acceptable. Because when we try to do things based on our own righteousness, uh, saying things like, God, have I not served enough? God, have I not been here enough? Thinking that it's because of those things that we are blessed. No, we will get it wrong. Grace qualifies us. Then God blesses us for, I mean, God rewards us for the actions that we take. Just, just think about, think about, you know, I was thinking about this recent, I mean, recently, and I thought, think about the immigration system. Somebody sneaks into the country. It doesn't matter what he does afterwards. He's not qualified to be here in the first instance. We always need to visit that. Are you qualified to be here? Grace qualifies us. Let me tell you, say, grace qualifies us. And then God rewards us. You see, the nature of God is good. He is a good God. He's looking for ways and avenues to bless us. You know, religion has painted God as God is looking out for us to make mistakes so that he can deal with us. But the Bible says that God is rich unto all that call upon him. The Bible says that if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally. And what upbraids not, he finds no fault. Anything on the say, God is not finding fault. You know, some people are always finding fault. Some parents are always finding fault. Some bosses are always finding fault. What, I mean, in fact, sometimes when you do right, they think you have done wrong, and then they shout, and they find out you have done, <laughs> done right, and they don't even apologize. But God doesn't find fault. He's always looking for ways to bless us. He's always looking for opportunities to bless us. And when God says, uh, what do you have? will you give me that? But God is not asking us because he needs it. But he, because he's looking for ways to bless us. When he said to Abraham, take now your son, your only son Isaac. I mean, we went through all of that drama to say, God, there's a drama in a ticket. Why? Because he's always looking for opportunities to bless us. God is pouring out rain. Are your containers ready to receive? God is pouring out rain. Are your containers ready to receive? If we go through scriptures, we'll find people who are blessed, who receive the rewards of what they did. Let me show you five people in scriptures quickly. How many of you remember David building a temple for God? Okay, he wanted to build it. It was even a motive. He, did, he didn't get to build it. It's, the Bible says that David had become established in his kingdom. You know, God promised to make him a king. And then for several years, King Saul started chasing him to kill him. Eventually, he became king over, over Judah and over Israel. And then his reign was consolidated. And he, was, he had become king. Everything was settled. He had built a very good house. And he was living in his house. And then one day, he looked out and he saw the ark of the covenant, the presence of God. And then he said to him, he said to himself, he said, I am dwelling in my good house. Why should the presence of God dwell in a tent? A lot of times, you know, I find believers are waiting for God to move them. Oh, we need so-so-so in church. I'm waiting for God to move me so that I can. No, David moved himself. In fact, that's why the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. Because he was invested in God. And David said, ah, he called the prophets. Let, let's find out what we can do. Listen, my, my, I, built, I built a house. I'm living in my house. And you know what? The, the Ark of the Covenant is staying in a tent. It shouldn't be so. And then the prophet said, yeah, that, I think that's right. Do it. And then as the prophet was walking away, God said, go back and tell him. He said, all these years, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't move anybody with the Holy Ghost. He said, but you thought it good to do this for me. And then God began to bless him. He said, you will always have a seed on the throne. He said, I will not take my mercy away from you as I took it from Saul. He said, if your kids, your seed, they misbehave. He said, I will punish them, but they will always return the soul. I mean, if you remember what he said, Jesus, son of David. I mean, that was a very long connection. He said, son of Joseph or son of Abraham. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Why? Because God gave him a promise. Why? Because of what he did. God reward. And you know what? He didn't even build it. God said, no, you can't build it. Your hands are soft. Your son will build it. But because you had it in your heart. God, I Abraham. Abraham, we all know that. Take now your son. Your only son. Whom you love. I said God wanted to drive it home. Like, you know, I know what I'm asking of you. Take now your Bentley. Your only Bentley. 
that you love. I mean, we shouldn't love Bentley Smith. You know. <laughs> Take now your house, your only house, which you love. And God tells him to take it. And Abraham obeyed. And Abraham got there. Got, to get, got ready to sacrifice his son. And then the angel of God said, now that I know that you will obey my voice. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. In blessing, I will bless you. But I'm talking about Abraham today. That Abraham has many sons. Was he talking about it? Obedidon. How many of you remember Obedidon? Obedidon uh, was not supposed to feature in the story. David wanted to go and bring the hack of God to bring into the city of David. And then they didn't follow the instructions that God gave them about bringing the hack. Priest was meant to carry it. So they got an oxen, put it in an oxen. And while they were coming, the oxen stumbled. And a man called Uzzah said, ah, no, the presence of God. So he put his hand out to touch it. The, the ark of it was not supposed to touch it, so there was so much power, electric current coming out of it. You know, anointing power. His heart stopped working, and then you know. And David said, I, "I'm not taking." David is very like, <laughs> said, "I'm not taking this thing that kills people into the city of David." Lest God starts killing everybody and kills me. And you know what? They found the house of somebody that couldn't complain. They dropped it in his house. You know what happened? In three months. Three months, the life of Obedidon turned around. He was so much blessed that the king had it. Now, I, I'm thinking, what, what happened to Obedidon? I, I, I've been trying to figure it out. Is it that he was, you know, uh, his gold suddenly multiplied? You know, he had one box. And every day when he wakes up, there are ten more and ten more. I don't know what happened. Maybe his, um, his goats weren't giving back at a rate of one every three months, all right? Maybe they were giving back every, every other day, like, bam, 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 bam. He was so blessed that the king had it. The same king that said, if he's going to kill people, he should go to kill people in your house. And I said, okay, now, now, bring it. David didn't hide his feelings. I want the blessing. Bless. The Lord blessed the house of Obedidah. Hallelujah. I'm going to remember Peter. Peter was a fisherman. Jesus wanted to preach. The people were pressing in. They couldn't hear Jesus very well. And so he said, Peter, let me use your boat. He said, push out. Uh, Push out a little. And so he pushed out. And Jesus preached. And then we finished preaching. And then Jesus looked at Peter and said, Hey, Peter, lay down your nets for a catch. Now, Peter is an experienced fisherman. They fish at night because, you know, maybe the noise and everything distracts the fish. And now fish don't come to shore. I mean, if fish, if fish come to shore, you don't need to sail into the, into the sea to go and... Jesus said, Now take your nets, and throw it out here so that you can catch some fish. He said, we have toyed all night. We didn't catch anything. I don't think you're a fisherman. It's just like me, I mean, you know, people sitting down and say, talking about IT, and I go there and say, you I have an idea. I'm like, ah, pastor, <laughs> mind your business. And Jesus says, throw down your nets for a catch. I'm not reading the scriptures because I don't have too much time, okay? I need to run this up, okay? Um, I said I was going to continue my session on, on, on Friday. Was it Friday? Yeah, okay, all right. For additional tape copies, write to Dr. Ragbadi Ministries. <laughs> all right. And so Peter throws down the nets, and then he cuts a net-breaking harvest of fish. He had to call to the other people on the other side, come and help us. And you know what? He just realized that I'm a sinner. Go away from me. What happened there? Rewards. Acts chapter 10, Cornelius. The Bible says Cornelius will always fast. He will always give hams. One day, an angel showed up. He said, Cornelius, your prayers and your hams have come up before, as a memorial before God. Now send and get Dr. K to come and preach to you. I mean, God could have sent his neighbor. But apparently he needed to hear these words from an apostle. The head of the church then, they had to send for Peter. 
to come and preach the word to him. And in fact, the Bible says, why Peter here speak the, these words? The Holy Ghost fell on all those who are, they didn't have time to say pray, the pray, I mean, sinner's prayer. Why? Rewards. Let me tell you, tell your neighbor, say, God is a rewarder. What does God reward? He rewards our obedience. Next slide. He rewards our givings. He rewards our prayers. He rewards doing good. He rewards obedience. He rewards faithfulness and dedication. He rewards fulfilling purpose and ministry. God rewards our work of faith. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you some scriptures. Are you here this morning? Look at the scripture, Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. It says, They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day I make them my jaws, and I will spear them as a man spears his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and who does not serve God. God is a rewarder. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God rewards. Rewards always come. You know, when a, when a, when a season in our world, when people talk down on people that go to church, you mean you give your money See, the pastor will buy a money suit with your money. One of my friends called me and said, Ah, I said, Otto, you became a preacher. I said, Yes. He said, Well, at least you have a chance of buying a jet. <laughs> like, he said, Your job prospects are good. I mean, you didn't practice accounting, but your job. Listen, that's, that's, that's the world talking. They try to dissuade you from the too much. And you know what? Because knowledge has increased, uh, people are now substituting the commitment to God for knowledge in the world. Forgetting God is a rewarder. Yeah. You know what God told the nation of Israel? He said, when you get into that land I've given you, you've built goodly houses, and you live in them, and fill your houses with all good. He says, don't forget. Don't forget. Lest you say, the power of my hands and my works, and my strength, and my degrees, and my connections brought me here. Don't let the naysayers stop you from walking in the rewards that are yours. God rewards our commitments. Showing up in church, serving people. God rewards our giving. God rewards our evangelism, reaching out to people. God rewards our time spent in prayer. God rewards our commitment. You know, sometimes you don't even know where, what's happening. You don't know how it's going to turn out, but you're standing in faith still. I believe God. I was talking with a pastor recently, told me, he said, oh, this person is no longer a Christian. I'm like, what? I mean, I can hear of people saying, okay, maybe they're not going to church again. He said, no, he's no longer a Christian. Like, he said, so she's no longer a Christian. God rewards doing good. And do you know the reason why a lot of people don't get rewards? Is because they stop doing it. The reason, okay, let me say this like to get this on. The reason why rewards don't show up is because people stop doing. Galatians 6, 9, it says, look, look, Galatians 6, verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Flip it around. We shall not reap if we lose heart. I've been showing up. I've been doing this. And all of a sudden you say, you know what? I think I need to help myself. Even the Bible says, heaven helps those who help themselves. Anthony chapter 1 verse 12. And then they stop doing they stop serving. They stop giving. And then the reward doesn't come. Why? Because they stop. Let me tell anybody, say, don't stop. Oh, you're not saying like you mean it. Let me tell anybody, say, neighbor. Say, li listen to me. Don't stop. Don't stop doing good. Don't stop giving. Don't stop praying. 
Don't stop serving. Why? Because your reward will show up. A lot of people, you know, a lot of the words we have had this week, this is what I, I'm giving you handles. I, I, I wanted to, you know, take this and carry this away with you. God is pouring out a rain. And when I'm positioned with an understanding of grace, that my service, my honor for God, my love for his kingdom, my passion in service are acceptable to him, then I know that the rain will come. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 35 to 39. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but we are those who believe to the saving of the soul. There's a reward coming. Let me say this. One of the things that God rewards is if we stand in the place that God has called us to stand. In talking about the body of Christ, you know, Paul writes to the Corinthian church. He said, God has placed us differently in the body. One is the high, one is the hand. And he says that every one of us has a place in the body. And when we find our place and start doing what God asks us to do, then the blessing will flow in that direction. A lot of times, people want to start doing the things they are not called to do, start intruding into things they are not called to do. And there's no reward there. Because it doesn't reward those things. Find your place. Find what God has called you to do. And stay faithful doing it. You know, there's, there's, this, there's this scripture that says, Blessed is the man when the master comes and finds so doing. Doing what? What he has called him to do. And so, in Supernatural 2023, this is my chat to you as we leave. There's a rain that is upon us. There's a grace of God that is poured out for us. And as we start moving, finding expression, doing what God has us to do, standing where he's asked us to stand, then we'll begin to see the rewards of our labor and the impact of his grace. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Will you lift your hands up to God this morning? And I wanted to speak a word to God. Alright, by the Spirit of God, I want to minister to two people here. The first is this, this word came. Paul writing to the Galatian church, I said, take, take, tell our keepers to take heed to the ministry which has been committed into his hands. Someone here, there's a word from God to you. Take heed to what has been committed into your hands. Don't let the pressures of life turn you away from what he has asked you to do. Don't let what people say, the naysayers, the ones who are not doing anything stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Take heed to your ministry. Take heed to your ministry. And the second word is this. Don't let offenses stop you. And it is for someone. What people have done, what people have said. And because of that, you turn away from your father and your God. Don't let offenses stop you. Because in the end... It will be required of you what you have done. And it doesn't matter what people say because your service is to God, not to men. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise.
Will you lift your hands to God, everyone? Let's just honor God here. 